Welcome to the PR Maven podcast, a podcast all about growing your network and building your brand through traditional and digital networking techniques. I'm Nancy Marshall, the PR Maven and CEO of Marshall Communications. I've been strengthening brands through PR for over 35 years, and now I'm celebrating the success of executives, influencers, business owners, and entrepreneurs from all around the world, all of whom have cultivated their brands and broadened their networks through traditional and digital networking methods. Each week, I interview one of these interesting and influential individuals and provide an opportunity for you, the PR Maven Nation, to gain insights from their strategies and stories. So stay tuned for this week's episode, and thanks for listening. Welcome to the PR Maven Podcast, episode number 215, presented by Marshall Communications, creator of the Marshall Plan 65-step creative process. For those of you new to the show, I'm your host, Nancy Marshall, the PR maven and CEO of Marshall Communications. Welcome. And with me today is Amanda Plo, who is Marketing and Communications Manager at the Maine Maritime Museum. Welcome to the podcast, Amanda. Oh my God, thank you so much for having me. I'm so happy to be here. It's really exciting. It's fun for you to be here in the studio with me. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> So Amanda's first job in high school was as a clerk at an independent record store. She holds a BA in Media and Communications from the University of Southern Maine and an MFA in Creative Nonfiction from USM's Stone Coast program, where she served as managing editor of the Stone Coast Review. After college, her professional experience includes consumer relations at Toms of Maine and in the communications office at Wilshire Boulevard Temple in Los Angeles, one of the largest and oldest congregations in the country. For two years, she also taught writing at the, how do you pronounce it, Noman? Mm-hmm. Noman School for Visual Effects in Hollywood. Yeah, it's not Gnoman, even though it <laughs> looks like Gnoman. <laughs> It's like no man. <laughs> Sorry. Currently, Amanda is the marketing communications manager at the Maine Maritime Museum and publishes a bi weekly memoir pop culture e newsletter called Plow Shares. Plow Shares. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> I always say, she's probably sick of hearing me say this. It's like Thoreau, Plow. <laughs> That's how you pronounce her last name. Amanda's writing has appeared in the Portland Phoenix. Viola Magazine, and the literary journal, Two Serious Ladies. She lives in Bath with her husband, their dog, and one cat, although I hear it may soon be two. Ooh, it may soon be two. That's right. (laughs) So, Amanda, tell us about your position at the museum and how you got into your career in the first place. My position at Maine Maritime Museum, uh, I'm the marketing and communications manager, um, and that entails a quite a bit at Maine Maritime Museum. So I manage the website, the social media, all of our media relations. I'm responsible for our print collaterals, uh, signage, um, all of our Yelp and Google reviews. It's I wear quite a few hats there. Yes, you do. I know. And then there's various and other sundry responsibilities like yeah. with events mm-hmm. you know we hosted mm-hmm. kind of an event together with yeah. Benjamin Williamson recently from Down East magazine yeah that was so incredible thank you so much for putting that together so we had Benjamin Williamson um who is the former photography editor at Down East magazine come to Maine Maritime Museum and he just gave this lecture about his photography and it was such a like I had not met him I was familiar with his work but He's spoken such about his work um, as a photographer, um, specifically photographing the coast of Maine in such a way that was like very approachable and inclusive. And he he gave really good practical tips for people, Um, even though like it's clear that his knowledge is very technical and deep. It it was it was really lovely. And it also was our highest attended lecture that we've had this year, maybe even post pandemic. So. Um, yeah, it was really, it was really awesome. Thank you so much for helping us put that together. Oh, you're welcome. I enjoyed it too. He's, he's a really great guy and a great photographer. Oh boy. Yeah. He had a slideshow of his images. Um, that was really striking. (laughs) So 
how did your time in customer service prepare you for a job in marketing and communications? So I was a 16 year old uh, between my sophomore and junior year in high school. And I got this job at Bull Moose Music in Lewiston, Maine. And I was this, you know, shy, insecure, like, uh, know nothing 16 year old I knew only about music on the radio and that was kind of it I don't know how I got this job I truly it was like I I don't know but it it changed my life and it was working in retail and working in customer service it it really kind of prepares you to expect the unexpected and you know when we were going through media training we talked a lot about the buy time statement and I think that when you're working with the public in a customer service setting, you're kind of constantly like doing improv, kind of trying to figure out how to help this person and make them feel taken care of. And um, and there is sometimes a little bit of, of BSing, you know, <laughs> like, so I just, I think that working in customer service is a, is a good entry level starting point for building your confidence, preparing you to work with the public, preparing you to kind of speak in public in, in a certain way. And I highly recommend if you can find like the right, the right fit, that that's a good place to start your career. I would agree. And actually, you know, I have this term brand ambassador, you know, anybody who's on the front line with customers is essentially a brand ambassador for that organization's brand. And it's amazing, you know, when you look at big brands and how they have frontline people who might be a very shy, inexperienced 16-year-old, and you're entrusting them to represent your brand to the public. It's uh, it's pretty remarkable. It makes a good case for having uh, a lot of training before you put somebody on the job, which sure. I don't think happens because most <laughs> organizations need to hire somebody and, like, put them to work immediately. Yeah, yeah. And, and I understand, you know, this was... You know, I started that job um, in the in the actually in 2000. So, you know, the landscape was a little bit different in terms of like it was a record store. It was like being in the movie High Fidelity, truly. Like, and you know, it's just a, the the media landscape is just a little bit different these days. So yeah, I was, I'm really thankful for that really special experience that I was able to have That's kind of nice. before you know all media kind of went up into the cloud. Right, exactly. Yeah. It's always good, I think, to have the experience before the internet existed. Because <laughs> I like to try to take the best of pre internet communications and combine it with, mm -hmm. you know, what we can do now with social media and uh, all the online tools that are available to us. So um, you are very astute, and I want you to tell us about your high school and college education and whether you knew at that time that you wanted to be in marketing and communications with your career. I had no idea that I wanted to be in marketing and communi communications. I, I, knew for, I knew for sure some things that I did not want to do. So I went to Lewiston High School, which at the time was one of the biggest high schools in the state of Maine. And... One of the things that that afforded me was, you know, Lewiston High School had all these different programs, you know, this automotive program, a wood, woodworking program. Um, the art program at the time was was incredible. There was printmaking, there was a ceramic studio, a painting studio, a dark room. Um, we did, you know, black and white photography in there. Um, so I went to art school after high school um, because I knew that I did not want to take any more um, math or science classes, and I felt like I had a, a developed an aptitude for um, uh, drawing and painting. So that kind of didn't work out. I spent a number of years kind of um, going from job to job. Um, I started blogging a little bit. This is kind of like in the age of Gawker, where like, you know, kind of memoir blogs became like sort of all the rage, and everyone had a, a blogger.com or a blogspot.com. Um, and I, that's when I really learned to love writing. Um, and I took that and I applied to us to the university of Southern Maine, um, in the media studies program. And again, it was kind of because I, I was looking at the English department and I thought, well, I don't think I want to take any like Shakespeare or like ancient poetry classes. That sounds like kind of a hard and a bummer. 
Um, so I ended up in this great media studies program working with Dennis Gilbert, um, who is still a lecturer there today. He's an incredible author um, and mentor and human. And um, that's kind of where I learned about uh, media and communications and kind of contemporary writing, how to pitch stories, how to write for magazines, that kind of thing. Um, from there, I, oh, I also, my first public, I'm, I can't believe I almost forgot. Um, I wrote for the uh, free press at USM under Dan McLeod and Paul Koenig, um, who are both at Bangor Daily News now. I also got my first internship at the Office of Public Affairs with Bob Caswell and Judy O'Malley, who are not legendary. Are, they truly are legendary. Bob is like one of those like kind of really old school PR professionals. And just like, you know, he was there his whole career. He was incredible. Um, and then Judy really like took me under her wing. And I will never forget one of the um, things that I learned how to do in their office was how to proof read like how to really proofread and what we would do is we would print out we'd make two copies of whatever we were working on either a press release or a blog post or whatever <clears throat> and one person would take one physical copy and read it out loud and the other person would hold a pen and paper and mark it up as they were reading and it's like just such a tried and true way to edit and because you know your eye really it misses things on the screen when you're reading on the screen. It's like, you really need that paper. And, you know, I, I can't say that I always take the time to do that now, but I, but I do know that that's like the best way to edit. Um, and that's one of the things that I learned, um, as an intern in the office of public affairs at USM. Um, and then I thought I was done, but I ended up working at, um, Tom's of Maine, which is a subsidiary of Colgate Palmolive. And I have to say that if you get a chance to work at one of the world's largest corporations, you should do it because the benefits are incredible. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so they had this tuition reimbursement and program. And I thought like, oh, I, I have no intention of going to graduate school, but I really should take advantage of this program. Like it's very cool. Free school. Yeah. Sign right. me up. So I knew I, again, just like I knew I didn't want to take any more math and science classes and I knew I didn't want to take any Shakespeare classes, which was pretty small minded of me, to be honest. I thought, OK, well, I don't have time to take the LSATs. I don't have time to take the GREs. I already love writing. And I applied and was accepted into the Stone Coast um, Creative Nonfiction Program, which was life changing and incredible. And that's uh, the long and winding educational road that I took to get where I am today. I think that's a good thing. I mean, I, I think that when you're in your 20s, you should try out as many different things as you can and figure out what you love to do. Because, you know, you work for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> we put in a lot of time at work over our lifetime. I mean, I, I wouldn't want to calculate how many hours I have spent working in my lifetime, but it, it is a lot. So you should like it or love it. I mean, I, I love what I do. I feel so blessed that I found something that I love. I hope you do too. Yeah, I, I, I think for the first time in a very long time, I can say that I, I truly love what I do at Maine Maritime Museum. It's, it's an incredible place to be. Oh, that's great. And I haven't mentioned we work together. We do. Uh, the Spoiler alert. <laughs> the museum is <laughs> one of our clients, and um, I'm enjoying it personally so much. Emma Dimmick works with us and keeps us on track, or at least keeps me on track. But, um, yeah, we had a meeting there yesterday about an upcoming exhibit called Sea Change, and uh, it's it, – there's just so much to it. Um, I don't know. It, it isn't really in our script, but why don't you talk about sea change <laughs> for a moment? <laughs> Let's just give it a little plug. Um, yeah. So um, sea change is um, a new immersive exhibit that will be opening at Maine Maritime Museum uh, early February of 2023. Um, in partnership with the Gulf of Maine Eco Arts, which is a project-based initiative. Um, and the whole goal of Sea Change, uh, Darkness and Light in the Gulf of Maine, is to really raise awareness um, about what's happening in the Gulf of Maine right now. It's warming faster than 90% of the world's oceans or something um, along those lines. And it's really scary. And it's, it's you know, the Gulf of Maine is something that... Um, you know, it's it's really important to protect it and to do what we can to make sure that 
we get to have it forever. So sea change is, um, it's a little bit hard to explain what exactly the experience will be like when you walk into the gallery space, um, because it's being built as we speak by, um, Gulf of Maine Eco Arts and a number of interns. Um, uh, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be very cool and a completely different direction for the museum. Like we are just kind of dipping our toes into contemporary art and showcasing work by um, living, working artists. And it's it's very cool that we get to, you know, this summer we brought in um, a number of uh, women artists in a series um, called Uncharted and we got to pay them for their work. Like, like, can you be doing like anything better than paying people to make art? Like it was incredible. So sea change is, is going to be really exciting. Right. And also to hopefully impact the future of our planet. I mean, what could be more important than that? Yeah. Um, we're really looking forward to also being a space to kind of hold some of these difficult conversations where, you know, a lot of people love and, and care about the Gulf of Maine, but are coming at um, the approach of protecting and preserving it from all these different perspectives. And so we're also excited to be hosting um, conversations from, you know, the, the conservation side of things alongside the fishing industry side of things and really seeing like what, how we can come to a, to a solution that, um, we can all agree on and make everyone happy. And it's, That's it's a big, it's a big, it's a big question. Yeah, indeed. There's, <laughs> there's a lot of big questions. <laughs> well, uh, I'm looking forward to working with you to promote that that show. Thank you. <laughs> so Amanda, you are what we call a boomerang because you grew up in Maine, you left and went to California, and then you came back. Tell us why you chose to come back to Maine. Yeah. Uh, thank you for asking. I So I, I chose to come back to Maine um, in part because uh, my husband received the okay to work from home permanently. So that was like kind of step one. Um, it's really funny. I, you know, I left Maine because I was laid off from my job at Tom's of Maine. My position was outsourced. This was 2012. I was making almost $50,000 a year doing customer service, which is kind of unheard of. Right. Um, and I really struggled to find a job, um, that would keep me at that, at that level. So I ended up taking my severance my very generous severance package oh, because, good. you know, again, one of the largest corporations in the world. Um, I took my severance package and I just traveled and, you know, was on the road for a couple months, you know, trying to figure out what my next steps were. What does it all mean? You know, I just turned 30 and um, I ended up in Western Massachusetts where I met my husband um, he was like, can we move to Los Angeles? I hate it here. And I am so glad that we did because it really was an incredible eye-opening experience. Um, but while we were out there, I got this targeted ad from live and work in Maine, live, work, Maine. And I remember feeling so like, so I, like, I was pissed. I was like, I had to leave Maine because I didn't have a job. Like there were no jobs for me in the housing. Like I was just like, oh my God, how dare they like pretend like I don't want to if I can't. Um, but joke's on me because I did as soon as we had the opportunity. Um, you know, and we, we really came back because um, we were looking for a better quality of life, um, to be closer to friends and family, um, and my experience um, at Wilshire Boulevard Temple, which is um, a, a huge, very influential organization, really set me up to be able to take this job at Maine Maritime Museum. You know, there aren't a lot of organizations in Maine that are operating at the same scale as Maine Maritime Museum. There are a few, um, but not not a lot. And, you know, the professional experience that I, that I was able to get in Los Angeles is directly the reason that I got this job that I love today. So it all, it, it really worked out. Um, that's awesome. And I can't <laughs> wait to tag live and work in Maine in our show notes. Uh, I think, you know, I'm, I sent them a, 
a not very nice oh. email. I, I, I feel bad, but also the joke's on me because they were right. And <laughs> <You're> I <did. laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, that shows the power of targeting with your your, your digital advertising yep. also. So yep. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Otherwise, we wouldn't be doing this right now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we're going to hear more from Amanda in just a moment, but now... I want to remind you that you can get a free PR Maven things to do pad, which is a coveted item. <laughs> you might get I, one I think too. I, do I have one? I'm not sure I have you a have to do list. The Marshall Communications, but the the PR Maven that it's a little smaller, okay, a little, okay. like more portable. So okay. you might get mm-hmm. one <clears throat> after being on the show today. So, uh, but if you leave a review on the, your favorite podcast player. And then uh, subscribe to the podcast and then go to prmaven.com slash giveaway and submit your information. We are going to send you one of these pads in the mail, the postal mail, which, as you all know, I'm a big fan of the postal mail. I love I love letters in the mail. <laughs> so now we're going to hear something from Mike Duguay about my two books. And we'll be back in just a moment with more from Amanda Plo. After reading PR Works, I really started to think about how marketing actually works and I know that sounds a little bit ridiculous but what I realize is what each platform nowadays that we use out there in digital media and social media has its own nuance uh, nuance and also quirks to it and understanding how they're used is exceedingly important because when you have a hammer in your hand everything looks like a nail and you can't approach it that way in marketing and that's where I think Nancy's brilliance really shined in, in PR works. I think Grow Your Audience, Grow Your Brand is is really sort of the manifesto of understanding that there's many different levels to marketing. It's on your personal side of your brand, how actually you express yourself through business, but also what people hear you saying and what they see out there in the public eye as well. So I think what's really important there, that's really the blueprint of how you go about using these new social media platforms, but also to express who you are as a human being. Because people want to see you authentically and genuinely working with what not only what you do, but also with the customers. And Nancy, on a personal level, I think she just, she, that's who she is. She embodies that approach. I just love that Mike Duguay. <laughs> I was telling Amanda during the commercial break that he's such a great guy. So we're here with Amanda Plo on the PR Maven podcast, which is also available live and streaming on Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube. So we were talking about the digital era and uh, how there's so many different ways to communicate, and we're trying to tap into all of them. <laughs> we're we're going to be getting into TikTok pretty soon too. Ooh, I can't wait for that. Okay, wow. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I can't wait for that. So, Amanda, you have actually taught writing in the past. Tell us about what kind of writing that was and how a strong writing background helps in PR and communications. So I got this opportunity to teach Writing 101, like kind of an intro to writing at the Noman School for Visual Effects in Hollywood, California. It's um, a big league. Yeah, it's um, – so students at the – so this is an art school. Students at this – uh, school were going there to learn how to create visual effects to like go on and do Marvel movies and video games and um, the school didn't have uh, it was an art school and they had a portfolio requirement but they didn't do like SATs or like an essay or whatever so as a result my students came into the classroom at very different levels some were English language learners some had gone to really rigorous um, high schools and others, um, you know, didn't care about school or reading or writing at all. So it was really challenging. Um, and I think, you know, I, I made a point to to assign like a, a pretty diverse range of, of writers in my, for the readings. And, you know, I had like Roxane, Roxane Gay in there, like Joanne Beer, just like some of my favorites. And I remember this student once asked me like, Amanda, where do you come up with this? Like, where do you, like, how do you know these writers? And I just, at the time I was a little bit offended. Um, but what I realized is that, you know, and this is kind of where the the PR and marketing kind of comes in is that you you really can't assume that people can read your mind and you have to kind of constantly sort of 
set the stage and reset and set the tone and, and explain where you're coming from and why you're doing what you're doing. Like, um, you know, I was thinking about this post that I did on the main maritime museum and social media that, that really was super successful. And it was all the ways you can get free admission to the museum. None of those were new. None of those had been introduced within the last year or since I started, but just like r reminding people of who we are, what we're doing, why we're doing it. And that's something that I, I guess I just assumed that because I was the, the teacher and they were the students that they would just like trust me and, you know, understand that I am speaking from a place of authority, but you know, this, this one student didn't and chose to ask me about it. And I think, and I, I will truly never forget that. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, he also may have been like, uh, thinking how, how have you been exposed to all these writers too? Yeah. Like, um, you obviously had a curious mind and, and you had a good education coming out of Lewis and high school too. And you, I imagine probably your parents encouraged you to read too. Did your parents um, set sort of a reading tone in your, in your home? Um, I think as, as a, as a young kid for sure. And then I think I definitely, um, found sort of like an escapism through books. And I remember there was actually, this is kind of funny. There was a time in my like early twenties where I wasn't really reading very much because I couldn't really find books that I was interested in. I went through kind of like a reading desert, um, and I think that going to Stone Coast really kind of reinvigorated and reopened my eyes to like how to find books that you like, what publishers you like, you know, when you find a book that you like, flip the book over, see who's blurbing it. Do you know those authors? Have you read those authors? Um, and it's, and it, I, you know, it's one of the most important parts of my personal life now is is reading and and thinking about reading and so I like that and I love libraries I don't know about you do you love libraries too um, I love libraries I actually so a little bit later I think we are going to talk about books more specifically <laughs> but I was talking to my husband about this and he was like you should mention the Libby app and I was like oh my god but the thing is, so the Libby app, if if you don't know, it's this it's this free app on your phone that connects to your um, library card, and you get you can access audiobooks and Kindle e-reader books for free. And it in if it's available to borrow, you instantly get it. It's incredible. But my Los Angeles Public Library account is still attached to my Libby, which is why it like works so well for me. I think you know I oh, wow. I moved to Bath. And unfortunately, I don't think it's an option for Bath, and I'm not sure what kind of free library apps are available for some of the smaller communities. So I'm a little bit spoiled. I still have my Los Angeles Public Library account. Well, I hope nobody from the Los <laughs> Angeles Public Library listening is going to cut you off all of a sudden, but maybe they'll see that you're promoting Libby and promoting their library yeah. on the PR Maven podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, that sounds like a great app. And um, yeah. We are going to talk about that a little more after, but uh, what do you like most about working at the Maine Maritime Museum other than working with Marshall Communications? <laughs> I do love working with Marshall Communications. Um, you and Emma have been incredible. Um, and I think that, you know, first and foremost, I, I do get to work with a ton of just super smart, super motivated, cool people like some of the work that a lot of my coworkers are doing really makes it easy for me to talk about how awesome the museum is because I really believe in in um, the work that they're doing and their you know the museum's mission to you know kind of move beyond like you know the historic shipbuilding part of our of our um, facility, which is important and and really interesting and cool and a vital part of our history, but you know, kind of like we were talking about sea change earlier, what, like how can we continue moving the conversation forward? So that's really cool. I was also um, just thinking a little bit about when I was in Los Angeles, like it was kind of the first time that I had not lived in Maine. Like I lived in Maine my whole life. And 
I, it turns out I really, really missed it. Like I didn't know that I was going to miss it, but I really did. And my husband was like, Amanda, if we ever go back to Maine, you really need to find a job where you're just like talking to people all day about how much you love Maine. And like, that is kind of what I get to do here at the Maritime Museum, you know, like, uh, you know, through the lens of the museum, but it is, it is talking a lot to people about, um, who we get a lot of tourists and we're one of the top 10 tourist destinations in the state, according to Maine Biz Magazine. And yeah, it's, it's really fun. And one of the things that I love about the museum is there's so many different ways to experience it. And why don't you talk about that? Because there are, you know, there's the exhibits themselves, but then there's the historic house and then there's the cruises and the tours. Yeah. So. Well, how long do we have here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still perfecting my elevator pitch, but we have, um, so we have the Percy and Small Shipyard, which is um, the only intact wooden shipbuilding yard in the country. Um, so we made these huge, massive, like six massive wooden schooners, the largest wooden cargo vessel um ever built happened on our on our property that what what we have now we also have a victorian home we have a blacksmith shop um it has uh, demonstrations um we have a lot there's a lobstering exhibit um a whole exhibit and um tour about the history of bath ironworks you know bath um is the city of ships bath built is best built it's a it's a huge part of why people come to bath and live and work in bath um we have cruises um, throughout uh, May through October where you can come and do a, a little boat tour on the Kennebec. Have you done one yet? Oh, I've done several okay, of them. There's done. the lighthouse okay. tour and yeah. then there's the tour that you can go by Bath Ironworks. Yeah, and, um, yeah it's wonderful. And then within kind of the, the primary history building, we also have um, rotating, rotating exhibits. That's where sea change will be. Um, and yeah, so, and that's not like we lectures educational programs events events like the beer event <laughs> yeah oh my god <laughs> yeah um pints on the pier this year was um our largest and most successful um beer tasting event um we had 425 people come it was it was incredible i've never coordinated an event like that before and that's and like was, around the second week of september yeah so it was, yeah, the second Get one. your tickets now because it could <laughs> sell out for 2023. Um, yeah, we're um, September 9th next year. Safety okay. Date. Yeah. Oh, good. You know the yeah. date, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm impressed. <laughs> September 9th, 2023, Pints on the Pier. Yeah. Okay. Are the tickets available? Um, not yet, um, right. but judging, like, I couldn't believe that we sold out last year. Like, people are just so excited. And it's not even just about the beer. Like, we have a you know, live music and food trucks and we're right on the river. And, um, so it's just like a cool. And fun I night. do remember yeah. the day, the weather that day was pretty it was, amazing. It was, it was like, it was what they call a chamber goodness. of commerce day. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. Yeah. So, so many cool and different things happening at my maritime museum. Yeah, there are. I, I'm a fanatic. I'm sold. <laughs> So, Amanda, is there a book, an app, a podcast, or a website that has helped you personally and professionally, and why? Other than Libby. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, you know, it was really hard to choose just one, but I think I figured it out. Um, and I wanted to talk today a little bit about um, Milltown by Carrie Milltown, A Reckoning with What Remains by Carrie Arsenault. It came out in, I believe, 2020, um, and it's a it's a combination of uh, memoir and nonfiction. Um, about her time growing up in Mexico, Maine, which is the sister town to Rumford, Maine. And, you know, there's a paper mill there. Um, and so what she's examining is kind of the history of industry um, and the present of industry in Maine and how these corporations are coming in and kind of, you know, kind of taking advantage of the natural resources of Maine. And it's a really interesting book. And, you know, I said so many great things about Lewiston High School and the Lewiston public school system earlier, but local history wasn't really part of the curriculum and what I remember growing up in Lewiston was that everyone wanted to leave like as soon as they could um I I think and hope that's changing now but what Milltown really did was it really helped me understand kind of the history of industry in our state um 
And then, so that helped me personally, but then, you know, as I'm coming into this role in marketing and communications, um, here at Mean Maritime Museum, I'm also responsible for, you know, with your help, pitching stories, um, you know, interacting with the media, um, buying advertisements. We have, we do a, quite a bit of advertising and, um, one of, you know, I'm a huge fan of Downey's Magazine. I'm a subscriber, you know, I, I've been a subscriber for a long time and they published an excerpt from this book. And I remember thinking that that was so cool and such a great editorial direction that they were taking. And, you know, I'm not going to point any fingers or name any names, but right around the same time, a uh, rival publication um, had an ad campaign with Patrick Dempsey for Poland Spring water. And, you know, Patrick Dempsey, he's supposed to be like, you know, he's supposed to be like the gem of Maine or, you know, he's our hero. We love him. We still claim him as our own. And like, it was really interesting to see like that may have been in a direct response to the publication of the excerpt of Milltown because Milltown kind of really comes after Poland Spring for, for really, you know, not being super ethical um, in their business practices. And so I think that, you know, this book kind of, it spoke to me, but it also helped me like understand where I wanted to focus my time and attention, um, in the media landscape in. Right. So that book is by Carrie Arsenault and it's A-R-S-E-N-E-A-U-L-T, I, I believe. I think that's right. Wow. Nancy, that was incredible. <laughs> well, I was a French major in college, so yeah, <laughs> I know that French spelling. Yeah, well, that was a good recommendation. Um, and it's interesting because there is a lot of literature that's come out of Rumford, Mexico, Mexico um, that whole area. I always think of the restaurant, the chicken coop, which is in Me uh, it's in Mexico on oh, your way okay. to go st Sunday River. I mean, I go skiing <laughs> at Sunday River. And this is a sort of a quirky restaurant. But, um, yeah, I'll have to check out that book. That's a good recommendation. Yeah, it's, it's not a light read. Um, for sure. And if you're looking for something like kind of fun and also related to Maine after that, um, Vacation Land, uh, True Stories um, from Painful Beaches by John Hodgman is really fun. Oh, and, very nice. And captures like kind of the silly part of living in oh, Maine. Oh, good. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. A, a That's more of a beach read. Yes, <laughs> yeah. yes, for sure. Well, maybe the Carrie Arsenal book would be a good wintertime read for those long dark days of winter. <laughs> so Amanda, if people want to follow up and get in touch with you, what's the best way to get in touch? Um, so there are a couple of things. I think um, you can email me at uh, Maine Maritime Museum. It's plo at uh, maritimeme.org. Thank you, Emma. Um, <laughs> I also provided, I think, my LinkedIn. Um, it's just Amanda Plo. Uh, my Instagram, did I see? <laughs> the so my LinkedIn, <laughs> the Instagram is not showing up. Um, I also have a um, a bi week semi bi weekly um, email newsletter um, of memoir, pop culture, animal antics, um, and you can subscribe to that at bit.ly slash plowshares. And that is a very clever name you came up with. <laughs> Ten points for that one, Amanda. Yeah, I'm you. definitely going to be subscribing to that. Looking forward to that. So if you have questions for our guests, obviously you can reach out to her or you can reach out to me. Uh, if you also have uh, suggestions on certain people you'd like to see as guests or topics you'd like to see us cover. But Amanda, I really enjoyed this conversation because you and I mostly are talking about you know, the museum and its PR. So this, this conversation yeah. was a little more wide ranging and I enjoyed that. So. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for having me. This was, um, you know, an absolute blast. And I am just so thankful that I came into this role where we were kind of already, you know, you were already on board. And so you got to help me like kind of navigate like where we were in our, um, public relations and our and our media so yeah. thank you for that well it, it, the pleasure goes both ways <laughs> so i hope you have a great day pr maven nation and uh, we'll see you next week
Thanks for listening to this episode of the PR Maven podcast. I invite you to share a review of the podcast on iTunes or your favorite podcast player. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast so you never miss an episode. You can also join the PR Maven Nation on Facebook. It's free to join and it's a great community of like-minded individuals who are all looking to learn and grow from one another. If you use an Alexa device, use your Alexa app to search the skills and games section to find and enable the PR Maven podcast flash briefing. This will give you access to exclusive content and more PR and marketing advice. Thanks again for listening and have a great rest of your week, PR Maven Nation.